Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to be doing some basic redistribution with EIGRP and specifically between EIGRP and OSPF. So let's take a look at our topology. And the first thing we're going to do is running between R4, R5, and R6. This is going to be our OSPF domain. OSPF. And let's change the color. Uh, we'll go blue. On this side, is where we're gonna be running our EIGRP. So EIGRP. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we have one route, which is hanging off R6, that I'm gonna to wanna to use for redistribution. And it's the loopback 6.6.6.6. .6 .6 .6. So the first thing we're going to do is let's take a look at R4 or R5. We'll start with R4. And we could see show IP route that we know it via OSPF, which makes sense. Let's head over to R2. All right, we don't know it. Um, clearly because it's not in EIGRP. So let's go to R4. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, because I actually know a bunch of routes from OSPF, so I'm gonna do show IP route OSPF. Uh, do show IP route. There we go. Um, I actually only know two routes, but I kinda of wanted to keep this example simple and just stick with the one route. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a prefix list Oh, I can't type today. IP prefix list. Uh, we'll just call it R6. And two. All right. We'll create a route map. And then we'll just match the prefix list. Okay. Now that we have our route map, we're gonna do the redistribution and we're just gonna redistribute that one uh, prefix. So let's go ahead into router EIGRP. Address family is IPv4 unicast. Autonomous system is 100. And we do redistribution in named mode under the topology base. So from here, let's redistribute OSPF. And we're using process one. And now let's take a look at our options. Uh, we could do match, which uh, that just matches the different types of OSPS routes. So if we wanted to match an external route, maybe an NSSA route, etc. cetera. Uh, we could do the metric or we could do the route map. So in our case, we're gonna do route map. And our route map was named R6 loopback. All right, done. So let's see what happened. Let's go over to R2. And we still don't have the route. Most of you probably realize what happened here, but this is because um, EIGRP does not do a seed metric by default for redistributed routes. And this makes sense. I mean, if we look in R4 and we take a look at that show IP route again, um, we could see the metric is two. And you don't need to know, you know, all the ins and outs of the EIGRP uh, metric calculation to know that we're probably not going to get a metric of two in EIGRP. Uh, in fact, if we did show IP route, let's do 1.1.1.1. Our metric is 16,000. Um, obviously, 16,000 isn't massive. We're not in a huge network, but the the two metrics don't mean the same thing. So what we need to do is let's go back into um, the IGRP. And let's go back into the re redistribute command, OSPF1. And we'll actually just do the same command because we'll, we'll keep the route map, it was R6 loop back, what we're going to do is you're going to add the metric this time. 
And now here's where we add all of our EIGRP metric options. So the bandwidth, we'll just do a thousand. Uh, delay 10, it's 100% reliable. Um, one for how uh, loaded is the link. And then our MTU will just be 1500. All right, now if we go back to R2, Show IP route. All right, now we have the route. And we could see that it's known via EIJRP 100. The distance is 170. And now this is gonna be different than other EIJRP routes. Um, so let's say for example, distance is 90 for this route. And that's because it's an internal EIJRP route. The external EIJRP routes have an administrative distance of 170. And you can see that here too, where it says type external. Uh, we learned it from R4. Uh, we could see the route metric is 517-6320, which obviously is a little bit different than two that R4 had. Um, and then we could see all the things we sent, bandwidth, reliability, MTU, etc. So now that we have the route, can we ping it? Well, no, we can't. And that's because if we go to R6, and let's look up the route to, um, well, we'll do R2's loop back, even though I wasn't sourcing the traffic from R2. It's not in the table. So we do need to do some mutual distribution so that R6 knows about R2. Um, so we can go back to R4. Let's go into router OSPF1. Let's redistribute EIGRP, AS100. And we can pretty much keep these by default. Let's head over to R6. And now we know it. So OSPF puts a metric of 20 by default when you're redistributing routes. Um, just something to keep in mind. Uh, you know, a difference between EIGRP and OSPF is EIGRP, you have to set the metric yourself, and in OSPF, you don't. So let's go ahead, back to R2, and let's um, ping the loopback of 6, and we'll source it from our loopback, which I believe is the back 0, and we have a success. So there's some pretty basic redistribution. Now, let's head over to R5 and add a second redistribution point. So we'll go to R5, and we'll do things a little bit differently this time. Let's go into EIGRP. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to set, and you could look, is the default metric command. This sets the metric of redistributed routes. This is going to be good for us in the future so that we don't have to individually set the metric on every single route or every single time we do redistribution. So we, could, we get the same exact options. We'll do 1,000, we'll do 10, we'll do uh, 255, 1, 1,500. There we go. And now we can do our redistribution of OSBF1. And I'm not going to set the... Uh, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and, and set that for the IP prefix list, um, R6, because we kind of want to keep this simple again. 32, route map, R6 loop back, permit 10. All right. All right, so let's do redistribution, OSBF1. Now we can set the route map to loop back, but then that's it. We don't need to set anything else. So if we head over to R2, now we can show IP route, 
and we could see that we're now getting it from two different places. We're getting it from R4, and then we're also getting it from R5. Um, the, the metric is exactly the same because that's what I set the metric for. So we could also do some, you know, EIGRP traffic engineering here, where if we wanted to, we could set the metric on five to be maybe a little bit better or worse than R4 to influence the path of the traffic that the, um, yeah, that the traffic is going to take from EIGRP into OSPF. So let's just double check again that um, we can ping and we can. So now let's introduce the OSPF routes um, in both directions, or uh, excuse me, introduce the EIGRP routes into OSPF in both directions because R6 is still only learning it from one place. And if R4 went down, you know, yes, R2 would still know about R6, but R6 would no longer know about R2. So let's head over to R5. All right. So we'll head over to R6. And all right. Now we know about it in two places. So let's head to R2. And we can ping. R6, results should be the same. Whoops. Uh, it's loop back zero, excuse me. All right, so we're looking good. Now, is there anything wrong with this? Well, Let's check our, all of our routing tables and see. So I'm just going to go ahead to all routers and let's do a show IP route. And we'll first do the route for six, that's six, that's six. All right, R2 is learning it from both places. Makes sense. R3, uh, R3 is just learning it from four, which is fine. R4 is still in config mode, so we'll do show IP route. All right, R4 is learning it from directly connected. Makes sense. R5, learning it from directly connected. And R1 and R2 are all learning things proper. Okay, perfect. Now let's check for show IP route two from everywhere. R6 is learning it from two places. R5 is learning it directly from two. R4 is learning it directly from two. And R3, two, and one are all in EIGRP. Um, well, let me just double check. R5, perfect. So you may think that we would get a loop here, but we're not. Even though that we have two points of mutual or of bi-directional um, redistribution. And that is because let's first take a look from our force perspective and let's take a look at the ERGRP routes. So when, let me grab my pen. When R4, let's take the link from R2. The loopback comes in and R4 learns it with an administrative distance of 90. It then redistributes into OSBF to here, which then redistributes up here. R5 is also learning that same link from here with a uh, administrative distance of 90. Then it takes it in OSBF, sends it to R6, which sends it to R4. Now when both R5 and R4 are learning the links from OSBF, 
what is the administrative distance? Well, if you don't know it off the top of the, your head, which you should, we can go into R4 and let's do a show IP route for six. We can see here distance is 110. So the OSPF administrative distance is 110. So we know that for these EIGRP routes that were redistributed into OSPF, even though R5 and R4 are going to learn them from R6, they're never going to install it in the routing table because the administrative distance 110 is higher than 90. Okay, so great. We know there's no loop for the EIGRP routes advertised into OSPF. What about the OSPF routes advertised into EIGRP? Uh, let me just erase some of this. And we'll, I'll keep up the administrative distance for EIGRP for you. So now we have R6. R6 advertises its loop back to four, which then redistributes into EIGRP with an administrative distance of 170. So the route comes back into R5 with an administrative distance of 170, which is going to be higher than 110, which is OSPF. And the same thing happens in the other direction. R6 to R5, which is 110. R5 then advertises down to 2, which then advertises down to 4 with an administrative distance of 170, which again is higher than 110. So R4 will not install the route from this, um, from this link. So this is one of the good things about EIGRP with its, um, with its default administrative distances is that because an internal route is 70 and an external route is 170, you're not going to, uh, by default, you're not going to have a routing loop here. So on, the, on my next video, I'll try to create a situation where we will have a routing loop with the IGRP. Um, but for now, this has been how to do redistribution between the IGRP and OSPF. And thanks for watching.